Good evening from the nation's capital. I'm Daniel Prusilidis in for David Aiken. Thanks for watching. A union-backed group that routinely funds attack ads against the Ontario Progressive Conservatives is now suing the PC party, alleging the party made defamatory statements on its website. Working Family says it's defamatory to call it a front group for the Ontario Liberals. Meantime, Ontario is just days away from a provincial budget that could show some troubling deficit figures, and it could be just weeks away from an election call. All at the same time, the provincial auditor general has wrapped the knuckles of the provincial government over how it tried to modernize Ontario's gambling industry. So, for his take on all of that, let's connect with PC leader Tim Hudak in our Toronto studio. Good to have you on the show, sir. Thanks, Tim. Good to see you again. Let's start off with this new lawsuit by working families. I mean, what's your response to this defamation claim? <laughs> well, for a while, there, the Liberals were coordinating their advertising strategy with the working families. That's the coalition of government unions that have basically been running this province, Daniel, for far too long. So now I guess they're, they're using their own tactics. Uh, they're suing us as well. Look, th this is an attempt to try to silence the opposition. We're not going to back down. We're going to call the facts as we see them. And another reason, quite frankly, why we need change in our great province. You know, l legitimate or not legitimate, uh, with merit or without merit, as, as the, the legal language may go in, in a defamation case, won't any of this, won't the, all this type of stuff become a distraction? You've got the uh, working families lawsuit, you've got the liberal lawsuit uh, against you. I mean, if there's a campaign in June, for example, and it, it looks like there might be, uh, won't this be a distraction from the campaign or limit you in some way? I, I don't see it like that at all. Look, you, I think you're right. It's a tactic they're trying to use to get us off the scent. I, I find when people lawyer up, they're, they're trying to hide something. But we will get answers for taxpayers on what happened with the gas plant scandal of money, no matter how many uh, ways Kathleen Wynne tries to muzzle us. But if we have a campaign, and Daniel, I've made no bones about it, we need one. We've got to get Ontario back on track for jobs and balance our books. But I'll tell you what I'm going to be talking about each and every day, my million jobs plan, how to get people back to work in our province and make Ontario actually spend within its means. We've got to get going. One of the issues that I'm sure would come up in any campaign is the size of the deficit, provincial finances. Uh, instead of the projected $10.1 billion deficit, it looks like we might actually hear about an $11.3 billion deficit on Thursday uh, during the, the provincial budget. How significant is that to taxpayers in the province? Well, that's just sending a signal to, um, to job creators that look outside of Ontario. It means we're going to lose more jobs. It means that taxpayers will be paying more and more in debt interest to pay off the money we've borrowed and spent instead of going into key services like, you know, the best health care we should have in our hospitals, the latest drug to fight cancer. Look, I mean, if you think that the answer to our, our problems is to spend our way out of deficit, well, you've got basically two NDP parties now, one led by Kathleen Wynne and one led by Andrea Horvath. But if you believe that we can actually get on a better path where government reduces spending to balance the books, pays down debt, gets Hydra under control, and focuses on jobs. That's me, that's my party, and we're ready to go because I think taxpayers are looking for change. What's the solution? How do you get the books balanced and get them balanced soon? Because you can't, you, there's no time for a 10-year or a 15-year plan to balance the books. No, I, I see it as a first priority. Look, m my top thing to do is get people back um, on payrolls in the province. More jobs with better take-home pay. And the first step in doing so is making sure the government spends within its means. I just believe in, in its case in point in economics that well-run provinces will keep and attract well-run businesses. I mean, if you're a business, where are you going to invest? In a, in a mall that's run down and deep in debt or one that spends within its means? It's obvious. They do the same thing with provinces. So if we want actually more jobs to say Ontario is open for investment again, you've got to balance the books. Well, that's what I'm asking, though. In order to balance the books, uh, what's the plan? Where is the fat that you can cut? Well, you know, we've got to go farther than that. There's no doubt about it. I've laid out my plan. Let me, uh, it's five points, so I'll try to get through them real fast. Number yeah. one, we need to cross board wage freeze for all of us, including the politicians. And we've got to move beyond these gold plated pensions that exist only in government for new hires. Two, we need to reduce the size of cabinet. I would do that from 27 down to 16. Leadership starts at the top. That's where I would start as well. Uh, number three, we need to reduce spending pretty well on every ministry outside of health. The situation is that serious, but if we kick it down the road and delay, It'll be even worse. Number four, contract out government services. Actually have people compete for those services because you get the best price and the best quality uh, at the end of the day. 
and we have to downsize payroll. Look, Daniel, I'm not going to pull any punches here. We've added on 300,000 government jobs when we lost $300,000, 300,000 manufacturing jobs. You, you can't balance the books that way. It's a tough call, but we have to do it. I also wanted to ask you about the Auditor General today coming out with, uh, well, essentially, I, I guess, finding that the Ontario government botched the modernization of the gambling industry uh, in the province. For example, instead of saving a projected $1.1 billion, the savings were closer to $330 million, uh, which is about a, a third of the, of the projection. That's got to be concerning as well. Well, well of course. I mean, we, we said from the beginning we thought that was a... A phony plan. It certainly is not a job creation plan. I don't believe opening up 39 new casinos or the plan was is actually going to help move our province forward. It ignores the fundamental problems of high taxes and high energy costs and runaway spending. I, I just let me just take this back to the bigger picture here. I think what we see in Kathleen Wynne, the Liberals, is a tired government that's given up on balancing the books. They haven't put out a single new idea on how to create jobs. I think all they care about, Daniel is getting Liberal members re-elected. And any time governments put their own interests ahead of the interests of taxpayers, it's time to change that government. Now, they say they will shoot back at you, and, and even Wynne today was saying that uh, anyone except the Liberals would be an untried party because the PCs have been out of power for so long, and the New Democrats have been out of power, well, for even longer than the PCs have been out of power. Uh, she's campaigning on her experience, so I'll unofficially campaigning anyway. Yeah, that's what tired, uh, out of ideas governments say. Um, they won't talk about their plan because, frankly, they don't have any plans to create jobs. I'm going to take a very different course. Look, I think people are saying they're, they're tired of this government. They're looking for a bold, optimistic plan. I need to focus like a laser on job creation. I, I think we need strong economic management in the Premier's office for a change. My plan is called the Million Jobs Plan. The Sun viewers can see it at millionjobsplan.ca. Affordable hydro, less debt lower taxes and a big focus on the skilled trades. You have any words for Andrea Horvath and the NDP before budget day? <laughs> Make up your mind. Uh, honest to goodness, it, it almost looks like the NDP is looking for a contract extension to be the junior partners in the coalition with the Liberals. They, they seem to, to care about their own paychecks. I'm focused on creating more paychecks for Ontarians. All right, Tim Hudak, leader of the Ontario Progressive Conservatives, thank you. Thank you, have a good evening.